ourselves off. Uh, for everyone's awareness, uh, this webinar will be recorded uh, for future promotional purposes. So feel free uh, whether or not to take notes now or to review the recording once it goes live on CHCI's official YouTube channel. Um, so just wanted to make sure that folks got a chance to hear that uh, from me directly before we begin. So thank you, like I said, this informational webinar will be going into a little bit in depth of what to expect at CHCI's 2024 Congressional Internship Program. We will be discussing both summer and fall opportunities here at CHCI. Just for a quick overview, as well as a set of ground rules. So really quickly, today's agenda, we'll be going through program basics, internship responsibilities, program expectations, and the application process. I'm going to ask that we use the Q&A function that should be able to be found um, in the system um, at the bottom of your screen. Uh, for any questions, we have the dedicated Q&A section at the end, uh, just so that we can go ahead and get through all the material all at once without in, any interruptions. And then that way we can have a dedicated discussion um, talking through all of the items that are needed. Uh, just again, for a set of ground rules, I'm gonna ask that we keep our mics as well as our video off, um, just as a courtesy to me as I navigate and handle uh, today's webinar um, and ask that we just use the Q&A function for tonight. So just kicking us off, I want to share with folks that here at CHCI, the team involves me, myself. My name is John Carlos Barrera. I'm the Associate Manager of College Programs here at CHCI. And my supervisor, Caroline Gonzalez Scott, is our Vice President of Leadership Programs. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I am from a mixed Hispanic background. I come from a mother of Dominican background, as well as a father uh, who is Colombian. Uh, born in Queens, New York, but raised in Miami, Florida. So for anyone who's from the South Florida area, I give you a major shout out. Shout out to home. Uh, I've been with CHCI for now three years, going on to four in January. I'm so excited. I've been a part of the organization ever since I was a program specialist here for the internship team. And I'm so excited to share with you um, not only a little bit about my experience, but as well as what we can expect uh, within the program for anyone um, who is interested in pursuing us within the 2024 cycle. So again, I just wanted to share that a little bit about myself. I also received my Bachelor of Business Administration in Marketing from the Miami's first and only public research university known as Florida International University, FIU. Uh, shout out to any Panthers that are in the room. I, as you can imagine, big fan of Miami. The 305 will always uh, live inside of me. So as always, just wanted to make sure folks got to hear a little bit about the folks that run the program. I think that's always important to be aware of as well. So switching gears into CHCI, a brief history of the organization in its entirety. Um, back in 1978, there were four members of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus who decided that it would be in great need for the Hispanics in public service and in that response, they wanted to form a nonpartisan 501c3 educational organization, which is now known as the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute. By 1986, the CHCI fellowship program was expanded um, into uh, include recent college graduates. That then lead to the summer internship program, uh, providing um, Hispanic undergraduate students with a unique opportunity to learn firsthand about the policymaking process. By 2010, uh, the Congressional Internship Program was, had transition, transitioned from only occurring to the summer from being available year round and now only being available for summer and fall. So just clarity for folks, 
Um, and just a little bit of tidbit about the organization as a whole. As you can imagine, there were just only a few members of Congress back in 1978 that come from um, Latino descent and had made the decision that there was a bigger need here. And the question of how does that entity be created? And so we here at CHCI see ourselves as the premier Hispanic learner, uh, leadership development organization um, in the United States. So following up with our agenda, we have program basics on deck for us to review. One thing that's important to note is our internship dates. So we'll start off with summer 2024. The first thing to be mindful of is travel. So folks who do get it selected into the summer 2024 internship program can expect to arrive to Washington, D.C. by May 21st of 2024. Right after arriving to D.C., we kick things off with an orientation week from May 22nd to June 1st. After orientation week, we place folks in congressional office placements, and that starts from June 4th to, June, uh, to August 1st. And then from our last day of programming, which is the last day of commitment for uh, interns of the summer 24 uh, cycle, can be known as August 2nd, and with a departure going back home on August 3rd. One thing to note here at CHCI, federal holidays are recognized and are given uh, the day off and paid off to our interns. So for the 2024 year of the summer internship, you can expect that to be May 27th, Memorial Day, June 19th for Juneteenth, and July 4th for Independence Day. Going into fall 2024 internship dates, the arrival date that you can expect is August 20th. Going straight into our orientation week the following day from August 21st to August 31st. Then folks going into their office placements from September 3rd to November 13th. Ending the program off by November 15th and sending you back home by November 16th. And again, those federal holidays during for the fall program that people can anticipate will be September 2nd, October 14th and November 11th, Labor Day, Indigenous Peoples Day, and Veterans Day. So let's go into eligibility. One thing that's always important to know is that here at CHCI, high academic achievement is preferred, but never required. We wanna make it very clear that just because you don't have a 3.0 GPA does not mean you should just automatically disqualify yourself from applying. We want to still hear from you. We want to hear from your experience, but we do want to just emphasize there is a preference for high academic achievement. We're looking for individuals that have evidence of leadership skills and the potential for leadership growth. So here at CHCI, we recognize that we are a leadership development organization. However, one of our major things for folks to be aware of is that you are already leaders in your own right. CHCI is used as a mechanism to polish folks and to get them into their next big, uh, their next big thing. And one of the things is always shared is that we're looking for folks that have already demonstrated that. So demonstrated the commitment to public service oriented activities. They have engaged in their communities and they are known as student leaders. They're known in their communities. They have involvements and they have just done more than just go to school. Superior uh, analytical skills, outstanding oral and written communication skills is definitely going to be expected. As you can imagine, with being placed on a Congressional Hill office placement, it is going to require a level of competency regarding your writing and oral communication. So that is why we always seek out students of that nature. We like to emphasize that students must be currently enrolled full-time and working towards their undergraduate degree and the academic semester prior to participation. Recent graduates who graduate in the term immediately prior to the program session may apply. So what does that look like? For our summer 2024 program, you must either be enrolled full-time the spring 24 pro, uh, se a semester prior. If you are a spring 24 graduate, you may also apply for the summer 24 program. 
And for the fall 24 program, you must be enrolled full-time either that spring 24 semester or that summer 24 semester. Summer enrollment is never required because we always understand that university institutions uh, treat summer semesters as an optional semester. Uh, but we do wanna share that if you are enrolled, that does put you in eligibility for that semester of the fall term to join us. And if you are graduating spring 24 or summer 24, you are also eligible to join us for fall 24 program. For our folks that are community college uh, students, we are seeking individuals graduating that June who are eligible for the summer session prior. So if you're transferring to a four-year institution come the fall semester. So if selected, you will be required to prove confirmation of enrollment to a four-year institution for that following semester that you're completing your undergraduate degree. We wanna make that very clear for folks. Um, here at CHCI, you do need to have work authorization. That can look like in multiple ways. That can either be you being a US citizen, lawful permanent resident, and asylee or individuals who are lawfully authorized to work full-time without restrictions. What that looks like is that for individuals that are seeking consideration through the DACA program, also known as the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival, are eligible to apply for our programs, which is a unique opportunity. There's not a lot of internships in DC that accept DACA recipients, and we wanna make it very clear that this is also a program for DACA students and that you must maintain your employment authorization at the time of acceptance. That is the one caveat we love to point out to folks that you do wanna make sure that you have your documentation updated. So going away from eligibility and transitioning into compensation and benefits, we love to share that uh, we will always confirm that folks can expect to receive a placement office at a congressional office whether that is within the United States House or the Senate. We do offer stipends for our interns. So for the fall semester, that is a gross amount of $3,750. And for the sum summer semester, that's $3,125. The difference is based off of weeks. So the fall semester is 12 weeks long and the summer semester is 10 weeks long. These amounts are before taxes and amounts of your stipend do look different after taxes have been applied. We like to share that we do provide domestic round trip transportation to Washington DC, can be in the form of airfare or train. Furnished housing um, is also offered to our participants. Rent and utilities are covered. Academic credit is encouraged for participants who are uh, who need to discuss this with their academic advisors and institutions. So we at CHCI will do our very best to make sure that we provide documentation needed to provide to make sure that your academic institution recognizes our program for academic credit. However, we do want to emphasize that it is the institution that you belong to that makes the final decision on whether or not credit can be administered. Our last thing is that we love to emphasize how we offer leadership training, networking, and more to our participants. One of those many benefits, once joining the program and finishing the program, is joining our CHCI Alumni Association. It's one of the fastest growing networks of Latino professionals in the country. More than 4,800 highly accomplished alumni have successfully continued their journey beyond CHCI and into the workforce as powerful leaders in the public, private, and nonprofit sector. And really quickly, as you can imagine, there are regional chapters all throughout the continental US, and those can be found in Chicago, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, Southern California, South Florida, New York, Phoenix, and right here in Washington DC metro area. So going into responsibilities, what does it look like to actually be in the internship and what am I going to be doing? Well, one thing's first is that we want to emphasize here at CHCI is that we offer weekly programming. Weekly programming are sessions that we dedicate on Mondays from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. that will be held regarding professional and leadership development training. 
So the day is cut off in two halves. The first half is either going to be CHCI leadership development training, which our curriculum is centered on CHCI's four pillars of leadership, self-discovery, transformation through collective power, rooted in my own strength, and planting seeds for tomorrow. In these programming sessions, we do have discussions on leadership with peers, subject matter experts, and elected officials. During these uh, weekly sessions, we do also go off-site. We have site visits to public and private sector organizations. Examples of these can be the Library of Congress, uh, the State Department, um, the Department of Housing and Development, and so many more. We also offer networking training and experience during these sessions. And in the later half of the day, we have our partnership uh, with the Treckenberg School of Public Policy and Public Administration at the George Washington University. This is a GW seminar that is three hours in length and it is at the graduate seminar level. It is a non-accredited seminar, so we do not offer credit for folks. However, it is handled at a graduate level. And we love to share with folks that this is to really supplement the fact that, you know, we are seeking interns from all segments. You're not only expected to be a poli sci major or international relations or what have you. And because of the fact that we open ourselves to all majors, we also want to level the playing field and want to respect that not everyone is going to understand the political process, the legislative process, as well as the federal government and its full entity. So we use this as a supplemental training to teach you a little bit about what is it going, what, what are the actual operations of government. Now, for folks that do identify within majors of poly political science, uh, international relations, global affairs, uh, and what have you, this might seem as introductory work, but only in the beginning half. And the beginning half is usually actually going into our topics overview. So federal government and institutions and legislative process is one of our first sessions that we kick things off uh, for the GW seminar. Um, and this is where we kind of level set folks. We kind of break down the legislative process, what are the entities of all, all of those items. And then, excuse me, and then once we finish our introductory session, we go all the way into a more magnified view of all the policy issues that you can imagine. So just a quick overview can be seen here, identity, ideology, and activism, the current policy debates, reproductive justice, abortion, and transgender rights, the intersection of race, gender, class, and sexual orientation, media, responsible consumption, and useful political communication, and political participation, voting rights, and voting laws. This is just a quick overview of what we've done in the past. These topic sessions do change depending on the semester, and they are just here to give you an overview of just uh, of what we can offer in terms of this graduate level non-accredited seminar. Now, as you can imagine, we just talked about Mondays. So the rest of the work week is going to be in a congressional office placement. We want to emphasize that all congressional placements are identified by CHCI. So one of my first notes to always identify for folks is that even if you know an office or you've worked at a congressional office, whether it be the district office or even here in the DC office, we, as much as we respect and honor your connections that you've had with um, other congressional offices, we do want to emphasize that we are the deciding factor on whether or not you are pursued for any of these offices. So what that looks like is that if selected, we do inquire your political interests, your, politi your policy issues that you're interested in, as well as any congressional members that you're also interested. A specific interest in the members of Congress that are identified in the um, Congressional Hispanic Caucus is one thing that we always like to emphasize, that a lot of our office placements do occur and members that identify within the con uh, Congressional Hispanic Caucus. So one thing to note always for folks, and we always do take your preference, but preference is never guaranteed. So we always want to make sure that folks understand how that will work um, and that we determine by 
case by case and that we seek things by pairing and I and ideally hopefully going from your first second or third choice that you share with us if and when you were to be selected. So that's a little bit of the selection piece of a congressional office placement, but what does it look like to be on site? So the duties can look like constituting engagement, written correspondence, coordinating meetings or tours and other duties as assigned. As you can imagine, um, anything and everything can happen at an internship on the Hill. So just things to keep in mind. You just heard that weekly programming is going to occur on Mondays. So what that looks like is that for the remaining half of the week, from Tuesday to Friday, you're at a congressional office placement from 9 to 5 p.m., which is the standard work hours. However, we always like to emphasize some offices do keep interns that are past six and maybe even start earlier as eight. This all depends on the congressional office that interns place. They're all going to operate differently, especially for the offices that are in different time zones. I want to make a note that most times when it's a, a, a West Coast office, they do end their work day on the later half just to compensate for the difference in time zones. So just something to keep in mind for folks. But when it comes to work hours, we always emphasize that at your congressional office placement, it is a minimum of 32 hours a week um, and up to 36 hours um, in a congressional office. Um, the idea here is that since we are a full-time commitment, that you would be completing a full 40 hours of a week by having your weekly programming with us as CHCI staff. So eight hours with us and the remaining 32 hours a week at an office placement for a full to a total of 40 hours a week commitment is what we like to emphasize for folks. We always like to emphasize that there is a reporting piece. So you are going to have two managers, one who is going to be your direct supervisor in the congressional office, which is your intern coordinator. And during your internship experience, us as the staff members of CHCI will check in with you and make sure that your office supervisor um, to ensure that you have a positive learning experience. We love to emphasize that we are the ones that bring you to DC and your on-site work experience occurs with your direct supervisor and your congressional office. But we want to emphasize to folks that at CHCI, we have the deciding say on the days that you work as well as everything in between. So if we pull you to the side and for other items. So that's just something that I'll be sharing in a later slide, but just one, uh, wanted to foreshadow that. Here at CHCI, we provide a final writing assignment for each internship program. So what that looks like is that you would be developing a final writing assignment to add to your portfolio following the program. Uh, CHCI will review all writing assignments and provide feedback and support through our GW seminar. Our GW seminar does provide us access to a professor from the George Washington University, and that professor will be um, your guiding force in terms of how you will be navigating your writing assignment and will be providing you the training and support in researching your piece, finding contacts, assignment structure, and following up. So we just want to emphasize to folks that this is a full commitment experience, one where we like to think that you get to walk away with a tangible uh, assignment that you can actually showcase as a work sample and really showcase your time during here at CHCI. There's also a community service requirement during the internship. Each intern is required to complete a minimum of 10 hours for the summer program or 12 hours for the fall program. Um, of community service over the course of their internship. Interns must complete four out of the total required hours in a group setting of at minimum eight interns. The remaining hours may be completed on an indiv individual basis, and you get to choose your volunteer activity with a nonprofit organization here in this DC area, as long as you submit proof of hours. So regarding to my earlier statement that we at CHCI dictate uh, whether or not uh, we would pull uh, you for any engagement out of your congressional office placement, it's for our special events. So through uh, sponsor engagements, as you can imagine, through generous giving from our sponsors, 
they also want to meet the interns that um, that they're paired with. So interns will be expected to meet with their sponsor at least once during their internship and sponsors may invite their intern group to additional events. So something to keep in mind, these engagements might conflict with the working day and it is mandatory and as well as expected that we will take you out of your office placement and take you to these engagements to meet your sponsor as well as um, give your thanks. Here at CHCI, we do offer leadership conferences and summits throughout the year. And when we host our summits and or conferences, um, they may take place during your time in the summer or fall internship. We have a, um, mostly our conference does occur during the time for the fall internship that we always like to point out to folks, our conference and gala. And um, if it, any of these SHCI events occur during your internship, it is mandatory um, attendance as well. And that you will not be reporting to your office during these dates of special events. We also be hosting team building activities throughout our program. These can occur during the evenings or weekends and interns are expected to attend. So an example of this is maybe going to a Nationals baseball game, music or performance at the Kennedy Center, alumni barbecues, or a ropes course. So just an emphasis to folks that we are super intentional about the experiences that we put you in front of, and it's something that we wanna make sure that you get to experience. Going into program expectations, we want to emphasize that this is not a study abroad program. We want to emphasize that this is not the time to have fun in the city. This is a time intensive commitment of a minimum of 40 hours. It does usually go over when we include all the evening receptions, all the events, um, any, any events that you take the time to go ahead and do outside of your time with us. And so, interns have a very high expectations to meet is what we always like to emphasize to folks. When it comes to coursework, we emphasize that interns may not take additional courses during the internship without written approval from CHCI staff. Most approvals will be limited to, to internship or service credit, but exceptions will be made on a case-by-case -case basis. So as you can imagine, we have shared in, in a previous slide that folks do pursue academic credit with our program and we do a lot and we do give the accreditation to be am administered by the institution. So if your institute dictates that our program can be worth a credit hours for you, then those are the courses that we approve automatically. We do wanna point out for folks that if you are taking a full course load, this might not be the program for you. As you can imagine, you are working at a minimum 40 hours per week with one day out of the work week with us at CHCI and four days out of the work week with a congressional office placement. For a lot of our interns, this is the first time that they've ever worked 40 hours um, uh, during a, a work week. And for that reason, mostly it is time consuming. And we are looking to make sure that you do not burn out during your internship. And is the reason why we do discourage folks to take a full 12 course load or 15 course load, what have you. Participation in other programs is also a concern we want to flag for folks. In order to participate in other programs, you must receive written approval from CHCI staff before participating. This usually includes programs that are hosted by your college or university. So for an example, I am an alma mater. I, my alma mater in FIU has a program for folks to join here in Washington, DC. They have on-site programming. And however, and if you are seeking to join a program that is also facilitated by your university in that example, we need to be made aware of. Because one thing that we always emphasize is that we at CHCI are the priority. We are the ones that brought you to DC. We're the ones that are housing you, compensating you. And we wanna make sure that you are not prioritizing other programs that, are that will ultimately conflict with your engagement, expectations, responsibilities during the internship. So now you just got to hear a lot you got to hear about the program structure, our dates, what to expect to be on site as an intern, 
um, what to expect with the job. And now if all of that sounds doable for you, let's get into the application process. So here at CHCI, our internship program is split into two phases. Excuse me. Our written application is the first phase. Our written application consists of our contact information for one recommender. We want to note that when we ask for, uh, for your recommender, it is to fill out our reference form and not a letter of recommendation. We do not accept letters of recommendation here at CHCI. We have a pre-made form that will be submitted to whoever you shared as your recommender. And those prompts and questions will be what they answer to us to identify your candidacy as well. We require a three essay submission. So there are three essay prompts in the application. The suggested length is at no less than 300 words and no more than 500 words per essay. We expect to see a one page resume, university transcripts. It can be official or unofficial are accepted. However, we always emphasize for any individual that do get selected, it is imperative that you are aware that an official transcript is expected if selected. So in your application, if you start off with an unofficial transcript, just know if you were to be selected, we will be expecting that you go ahead and communicate with your university to make sure you can get an official transcript. Our last piece is to complete uh, to provide a, com a complete copy of your 2023-2024 FAFSA student aid report. The student aid report is what gets um, exported once you have completed your application at FAFSA. This is also the document that shows your EFC account, also known as the expected family contribution number. This is what is used to identify folks for financial need. We always love to emphasize here at CHCI is that we prioritize and have preference for folks that show financial need. If you are an individual that are is not eligible for FAFSA, we do like to emphasize that you can share um, your most recent tax return documents to showcase um, your financial need as well. So we want to make sure that folks understand if you cannot submit a FAFSA because of your eligibility, I know for a lot of our DACA recipients, that is an issue for them. So just know if you have the most recent, so 2022 uh, tax return documentation is usually what is used to identify financial need for folks that who do not have a FAFSA student aid report. So as you can imagine, once the written application is submitted, here at CHCI, we bring our reviewers to review and score. Every application is given a set of two reviewers per application to get an average score that is then determined to see if you become a finalist for the next round, which is known as our phase two, our video interview round. If you become a finalist at CHCI's program, then you are expected to do a pre-recorded video interview administered through the pro of a platform known as Vic Recruiter. The video interview consists of the same questions that you can expect then uh, during a regular interview, but you can record your answers on your own time. So this is on demand and during the set time that we've uh, set as uh, the parameters as a start date and an end date, and you decide which time and date between that timeline you want to administer your video interview. Responses for each question are time responses that are up to two minutes in length. The overall interview may take up to approximately 20 to 30 minutes to complete. And so as you can imagine, once the video interview is completed, we then go ahead and have another set of reviewing committee, a uh, selection committee come in and review each video submission. Every video interview is paired with two reviewers to get an average score that is then used to facilitate our final selected individuals that will be joining us at Washington, DC. That then leads us to our selection prep. So if you are selected for our program, once we send out offer letters, we do limit uh, the amount of time to sign your in internship agreement. We give you just about 48 to 72 hours to 
go ahead and navigate your offer letter speak to the folks that are important to you to kind of see if this is an opportunity you can finally sign off and give an official agreement that you will be joining us for the summer or fall semester. This is to my earlier point that official transcripts are required uh, for folks who are selected um, as well as a proof of enrollment. Proof of enrollment is usually a document that can be found by your university registrar or this can also be a document provided by your academic advisor that is listed on official university letterhead and can be churned in as such. Once you return uh, your offer letter, you should begin the process of acquiring your official transcript. So just again, if you decide to start your application with unofficial transcripts, we just wanna make it very clear that by the selection piece, you should be already making sure to have official transcripts. We always want to emphasize to folks that by this period, you should be speaking with your academic advisor at your institution uh, regarding the internship, right? So, so you want to schedule an appointment as soon as possible, um, probably when you are in the finalist round, right before uh, selection is made. Um, but one thing that we always want to make sure is clear this is an opportunity for you to see whether or not you can even receive internship credit and whether or not you can take the semester off. We always want to emphasize that this is a full-time commitment. And for a lot of uh, uh, folks that do get selected, they then find out that they do have to do a full course load after speaking with their academic advisor, and then they do have to drop off. So we want to make sure that that's not you. We want to make sure that you go ahead and remind you to do your due diligence, to speak with the individuals at your institutions that can help guide you in identifying what semester works best. Is it the summer? Is it the fall of 2024? To see what can you do to make sure that you're not taking a full course load, only probably taking internship credit and only focusing on the program. This is a live-in program that we always emphasize to folks. So living in CHCI arranged housing is a mandatory requirement. Um, and in that, we always want to emphasize to folks, if you have a lease or housing during that internship session that you are pursuing, you should be prepared to find someone to sublease your apartment or cover the cost of your um, at home while you're living in DC. So, you know, taking the time to identify, hey, I am confirmed to be in a dorm during this time. I am leasing out in an apartment during that semester that I am applying for the internship. Well, we want to make it very clear that regardless of where that is, especially if it's if for individuals that are in the Washington, D.C. metro area, even if you're on site here in D.C. going to school and you're living in, in some university housing that's here in D.C., you're still expected to join us at CHCI provided housing. So everyone who is in the internship must live in our provided housing. And that is something that is not uh, made exceptions for. So folks, we've reached the final piece of today. Um, we've entered our Q&A time. We have just about 20 minutes on the clock before we close out at nine. And so I see we have a few questions here. I'll go ahead and take the time now. Uh, hi, thank you for taking the time to inform us about the program. One of the application questions um, asks what school I will attend in the fall of 2024. However, I will not be in school, which is not listed as a possible answer. Can I still apply? I have planned to attend law school, but I will be taking time off and not start until 2025. So what that sounds like is that you're coming up to the end of your internship time. I mean, your undergraduate time. So if you, where do you attend to apply? So that's probably from the question of where you're currently enrolled. So in our application system, you wanna be adamant that you share that you are attending an institution. Um, and that is where, if you don't, if you don't emphasize that you're currently enrolled into a, um, in, in an undergraduate program, it'll pop, it'll populate this question of like, okay, so where are you going to be at the fall? So it's one thing to make sure that you are aware of that, like you list yourself as either a recent graduate or you are currently enrolled and you will be graduating 
by the time if you were to be selected for the program. So you want to make sure that you do that. If you still run into issues, I'm more than happy to uh, chat with you via email. My email is on the screen. So just something to keep in mind if we don't get an answer for you resolved uh, within today's time. Uh, Lewis, thank you for the question. I'm graduating this December and will not be enrolled uh, full-time during the 2024 semester. Is there any way I could still apply for the summer? Unfortunately, Lewis, Graduates of summer uh, of the fall 2023 semester are not eligible for our 2024 cycle. However, because you will receive your undergraduate degree by December, this is where we direct folks to our public policy fellowship. Our public policy fellowship is dedicated and curated, uh, curated for individuals like yourself who have uh, received an undergraduate degree um, and can pursue the fellowship within three years um, after receiving your undergraduate degree. So just something to keep in mind that unfortunately your, your graduation of fall 2023 does make you ineligible for our 2024 programs. However, we always want to emphasize that your journey at CHCI does not end there and that you can pursue our fellowship programs, specifically for your case, the Public Policy Fellowship. Sophia, thank you for the question. How do you determine which congressional office we work with? Um, like I said, there is a, um, if selected, we inquire about your political affiliation, your policy interests, your top three congressional offices and uh, of members of Congress that you are interested in. And then from that, we go ahead and develop a listing of who can be available to you and then from there, we notify the intern, hey, we have an interview scheduled for you. Um, and if you do get selected, then you get only one option um, to join in terms of your office placement. So folks only get interviewed once for an office placement. And that's how we operate um, in our placement process. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, when would we be notified that we've been selected as finalists? When would we be notified that we got the internship? So um, it's going to look a little bit different depending on the semester. So uh, when it comes to our summer program, we love, uh, we, uh, we finish applications on December 1st for summer. So by the new year um, is when you either so by the top of the year, you'll if you were to be selected as a finalist and do the interviewing, you're looking at a timeline of late January, February, early February. And then by late March, early April is when, if selected for summer, you would be notified of such status. Uh, for our fall individuals that are pursuing fall 2024, our deadline um, should be in March um, and finalists would probably get mostly notified closer to late April, early May. And then you would get notified by either mid June to late July on whether or not you've been selected for the following fall program, which uh, we would start in August. So just something to keep in mind. Um, Hello, is it harmful to our application if we have interned on the Hill before? In other words, is there priority for those who have not been in the Hill? So it does not hurt your application, but we do want to emphasize to folks that there is preference. So yes, we do wanna make sure that we prioritize individuals who have not had um, office uh, um, experience. We do uh, we want to emphasize that it's really more on the DC office. We always recognize that there is a district office on the, at, over at the congressional districts versus the DC office. And those are two separate ways we review. Regardless, we still believe that anyone should still apply if that is your experience, because um, who knows, you can make a good case for yourself on why you should be selected. We've had interns in the past being um, interns for other members of Congress, whether it be on DC on site or 
at a district office or even remote. So all experiences within congressional offices is welcomed, but we always want to make sure that you go ahead and take the time to advocate for yourself as to why, even with this experience, why you should um, be selected. So be prepared for that. Be prepared uh, to be expected to answer that. Thank you for the question. If we get selected for the summer program, are we able to apply for the public policy fellowship in the future? Is there a limit to how many internships and fellowships you can do? Um, when it comes to the internship versus fellowship, um, if you're in a space where you're applying to both because you have received your undergraduate degree, because that does occur, if you were to be selected uh, as a finalist, we would notify you and you would have to make the executive call on deciding which one to go for. And the other approach, which I think is where you're um, emphasizing, if you were to be selected and started, can you do a fellowship later? That is an option. That just depends on your eligibility. So what that looks like is public policy fellowship is a program that is dedicated for folks that are, have received their undergraduate degree and are pursuing the fellowship within the three year timeline since receiving their graduation. And our postgraduate fellowship is for individuals that have received an advanced degree and are pursuing the fellowship within two years after receiving their advanced degree. So something to keep in mind, your eligibility is definitely based mostly on education level for a lot of our programs. So that's one thing that we always wanna emphasize. It's not uncommon, it happens a lot actually. And we never discourage folks, if you have that interest to be a part of the internship, you get selected to the internship, you finish it. And now you're like, oh my gosh, I would love to do the fellowship too. If you are eligible, we always say, hit the submit button. Thank you for the question. I was unaware that CHCI, CHCI housing was required. How much is CHCI housing? I come from a financially disadvantaged background and I live in Northern Virginia, was planning on commuting and staying with family to cut on expenses. So CHCI housing, like I said, is required. However, it is of no expense to you. Our CHCI housing is free of charge. We pay for the rent, the utilities, and it is fully furnished. So you just pretty much just come with blankets, linens, towels, and any personal thing that just makes you feel comfortable and that you can fit into like four maletas because that's what we offer for folks. We offer um, two check bags, a carry-on and a personal bag for folks traveling via airfare or train fare. So four pieces of, of maletas luggage is what a lot of folks um, pursue um, in you know packing up their life uh, to do the internship. But yes, just emphasizing for folks, it is not an expense um, that we put on the interns and that it is free of charge for anyone selected to join our programs. I have another question here for the recommender. Does, I, does it have to be someone from our university? Can it be a boss from our place? Yes, actually, I would always encourage anyone to kind of pursue away from professors the only real reason you should be pursuing a professor to do your recommendation is only if you really have a very strong person uh, relationship with them, because most times a lot of professors just get tell us they got an A in their in the class, they got a B in the class, they participated, they did great, bada bing, bada boom, and they kind of leave it at that. And that doesn't necessarily tell me as a program manager much of anything in terms of your candidacy and anything. We want you to focus on identifying a recommender that can speak to your leadership skills, your commitment to the community, and ultimately why you should be selected. So think a little bit more critically of who you're going to tap to be your recommender. I have another question here. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, what are some tips that you have to stand out for the summer internship? Also, I am one of my school's nominees for the Truman Scholarship for Public Service. Would I still be able to add this to my application for CHCI? If yes, where? So just to the, uh, uh, quickly, I want to answer that last piece because it's it's super quick. Um, there, um, after the three essays, we have a, um, a an open-ended question for folks to kind of add and share anything else that we should take into consideration for their pro for the program and their candidacy. So anything that 
uh, you want to share. So the fact that you want to share uh, that you are uh, a nominee for the Truman Scholarship for Public Service, that's a perfect uh, space on the application. It's right after all the essay prompts. Um, it's like, what else do you want to share about us? Kind of, I'm paraphrasing here, but it's that type of open-ended question. That's where I would recommend you place that kind of information or even on your resume as well. Um, when it comes to tips, um, proofread, proofread, proofread. Uh, you cannot imagine how many grammatical errors we see in essay responses um, on the resumes. Um, you know, these are things that are going to essentially not put you in the best light um, in terms of your candidacy. We need people with raw, with strong writing competen uh, competencies, um, strong oral communication competencies. So we want you to uh, showcase that. And the first way to do it is your written documents. So making sure that all your written documents are up to code. Um, we recommend that you have a second eyes to review it for you before you submit. It's always recommended. Um, as a program manager of this program, I always want to remind folks like, you know, yeah, so you have an interest in, in the political process, you have an interest in what does it look like to be an intern on the Hill, you know, really dive deeper into that. Give us your why, give us what is your connection to it. Why specifically CHCI? I think if you prepare yourself with the intentionality given to really think critically about how you see yourself and what you can bring to this program will really elevate your application and allow you to think a little bit more critically about the end result of what you're trying to get at, which allows us as program managers to get a better idea of what you're going to impact in the program. Great question, Jennifer, thank you. Um, another question, who can, who can send in the referral application? Um, not too sure what we mean by that, but I do just want to emphasize that if you're just talking about the referral process uh, for your re re uh, referencer, um, your recommender, I mean, in your application, you would notify, you would put down the contact information of your recommender, and then that alone will prompt our application system to go ahead and send a dedicated message to your recommender and then gives them a whole separate link to fill out our pre-made form for them to identify areas regarding your competencies and your community, your student leadership, all of the above. And so just something to keep in mind that uh, the written application will be where you send um, the referral uh, for your recommender just by putting in that information. So folks, it looks like I just reached my last question. I'm more than welcome to just leave a few moments for any remaining questions. Um, if no other questions. Oh, thank you for the session. What tips uh, to stand out? We've already answered that. I'm a first year undergraduate student. Are upperclassmen given priority for the uh, congressional internship? Um, I actually have had freshmen, like literally they just finished their first semester and they're doing their second semester with us. That is always a thing. We're not going to give priority. However, as a freshman undergraduate student, we always want to remind you that this is the opportunity for you to share with us why you think critically again about your candidacy and think a little bit more in depth of what you're going to bring. A lot of freshman undergraduate students have a lot of experience prior to joining university that they can speak on. Um, and also maybe their first semester, they went really hard on getting involved and they have shown strong student leadership. That's also another thing to bring up in your application. So just think about those items. But yes, upperclassmen, lowerclassmen, they're all welcome to apply and there's no priority given. Can you explain a little bit more about the sponsors? I saw on your website that each of last year's interns had their own sponsor. What does that mean? So CHCI um, is only able to do what we do, as you can imagine, right? Uh, you get your transportation paid for, housing paid for, and a living stipend to have while you're on site in the program. All of this cannot be done and will not be feasible without the generous support of our, our of our sponsors here at CHCI. 
So everyone gets paired up with a sponsor. Um, it can look like in different ways. Um, most times um, our sponsors are looking for a little bit of criteria that we then paired, but just something to keep in mind. We always want to remind folks that, you know, some of these corp uh, some of the our sponsors are organizations in the corporate sector, foundation, uh, nonprofit sectors. So you essentially do need to be comfortable with the fact that you are known as the CHCI intern presented by Walmart, presented by Toyota, presented by Coca-Cola. So just be aware of that. I, I do know, and I want to respect for some folks, they would prefer not to be labeled alongside with the corporate name. But as you can imagine, we would not be able to do the things that we do without the generous support of our sponsors. So we just wanted to flag that for you. Um, and it doesn't necessarily come with anything other than just the title underneath the website of your bio. So it's not anything wild. I truly think that you will live, yeah, everything will be fine. Um, but in regards to sponsorship, that is how it works. Thank you for the question. I have a university summer program in July that advances Latino high school student opportunities to get into higher education. This program only asks for six consecutive days out of July. Would I be able to advocate and negotiate for a shorter temporary leave during the CHDI program? Unfortunately, no leave of that length would be approved. Uh, we don't even offer that much PTO time for our interns. Our summer interns are offered two days of PTO and two days of sick leave. Fall interns are offered three days of PTO and two days of sick leave. So as you can imagine, um, six consecutive days out of the office or just out of the program would not necessarily put you in any good footing. Um, and this is, again, going back to our earlier statement that this is a full-time commitment and that you would have to make that executive call on whether or not this is a priority for you because anyone who signs up for our program needs to recognize that we are the full priority during the beginning and end of the program. And that is something we want to make sure that is very clear for folks. Thank you for the question. Uh, do you recommend submitting the application sooner rather than later? Does when you submit affect how your application is re uh, revised or reviewed, I'm assuming is the proper uh, word. Um, no, it does not. We do not start um, the, the selection committee does not review any applications until after the deadline. So, you know, I just want to remind folks that, you know, waiting at 1159 on December 1st for the summer deadline, maybe isn't the ideal structure to go by. Um, you know, technical difficulties happen. There is also the difference of time zone. We always want to remind folks that we operate on Eastern time zone. Uh, so just again, we can't stress it enough. You know, if you got it done early, submit it, don't worry about it. But to wait on the 11th hour would be the only thing I would recommend that you don't do. And folks, that is my last question. We have arrived at the nine o'clock hour. I just wanna give you my thanks so much. Um, I've been with this organization for going on to four years. I am so passionate about the things we do. We are known as developing the next generation of Latino leaders here in Washington, D.C., and I cannot underscore that enough. It is so true. Um, listen, you have my email on the screen. Email me directly for any comments, questions, concerns you might have. If you want to answer, if you want me to answer a more specific personal thing that you have regarding a question about eligibility, whether or not this is a reality for you, let me know. I'm more than open to answer that through. Um, I want to make sure that everyone who is eligible hits apply. Um, it is competitive, but that doesn't mean that you should deter yourself from applying. Um, I'm looking for people who are ready to be open-minded, who are ready to explore the identities of their Latinidad and infusing it into their professional development and understanding the inner workings of not only Congress, but your nation's capital. So I hope this helped in making you make that executive call on whether or not CHCI's Congressional Internship Program is made for you. I am more than happy to answer, like I said, any other questions via email. But like I said, we have reached the hour and I want to thank you for your time and your, and, and your patience tonight. And with that, I'll send you home. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. Buenas noches and cuídase.
Until next time.